Now that I've imported my images into Lightroom, I'm going to select the photos I want to stitch. In this case, I'm going to pick this group of images between my two junk photos. That's why I shoot junk photos. It makes it very easy for me to see where my sequences are between each panorama. So I'm going to select my first image and then shift click my last image and I'm going to just tap the P key as a reminder flagging them so I know which images I used. I'm not doing any developing. The developing I will do afterwards with the stitched image which will be in raw format as a D and G. Now comes the easy part. All I need to do from this point is to take these undeveloped, unprocessed images, go to Photo, Photo Merge, and choose Panorama. And at this point, Lightroom is going to automatically start stitching together a preview, not high res, but a preview. And I'm going to turn off my Select Auto Projection here, and I'm going to choose Cylindrical. And I'm also going to uncheck Auto Crop because I want to see what my image looks like uncropped. I don't want Lightroom to decide how to crop it for me. And this happens pretty quickly, as you can see. And here's my stitched preview panorama. I can't zoom into it, but I can look at it and decide whether or not Lightroom has stitched together all eight of my frames properly. If the frames weren't stitched properly, you'd see something very wacky or funky like this, where I've got part of a bridge in the middle of the Brooklyn Bridge and it's just misplaced. So then you'd really know that something hadn't been stitched right and you'd want to try and do it over again, probably by discarding the first or the last frame of your sequence and trying again. And so returning back to our original stitch here, things look pretty good. So I'm ready to go ahead and click the Merge button to merge my image into a high resolution stitch. And while Lightroom is stitching the high resolution panorama, you'll notice up on the left hand side here, you have a progress bar creating panorama. Now this will take four or five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It depends upon the speed of your computer, the size of your files. So you can do other things. You don't want to develop these particular images while you're waiting for your panorama to stitch. But feel free to go into the develop module, do some editing, cropping, whatever, and that's just fine. Okay, now that Lightroom's finished stitching our high resolution image, we have to scroll down to the bottom of our folder here with the images in it, and here it is. There's our stitched image, and I'm gonna press the space bar to go into loop view, just to give you an idea of what this looks like in high resolution. If I go right here to that tiny, tiny little gray blip, and I click once, that's the Empire State Building. That small blip, in this giant, giant image. In fact, if you look at the size of this file, it's 21,533 pixels wide. All right, now that we're finished, let's just jump over to the develop module, and I'm gonna start out by doing my crop. So here we are, my horizon line looks a little crooked. I'm gonna click on auto, and there, Lightroom did a little tweak there for my rotation and now I'm going to just tighten up this crop my way like this just to get rid of that scalloping that happens when I do a stitch like that click done and now I'm just gonna poke this open a little bit just a little so I'm gonna go to maybe 0.3 I'm gonna take my highlights down for the sky my whites down just to get that sky nice and rich and I'm going to open up my shadows. There we go. Completely open up my shadows. And I'm going to open up my blacks. And I'm going to take my presence, bring that up, and help replace some of that loss of contrast that I did by reducing my highlights and opening up my blacks and whites by adding some clarity here. So that's pretty good for the moment. I'm going to just make this picture a little bluer. I'm going to make my color temperature around 5,500, like that. And now I'm going to go down to my hue, saturation, and luminance. I want a bluer sky. So I've clicked my targeted adjustment tool. I'm just going to click right here in the sky. You'll see on my saturation, blue is highlighted. Blue that up a little bit. Notice the bridge is blue, the water's blue, so this has all gotten some nice saturation. And now I'm going over to the Brooklyn Bridge, which is orange, which is really more brown, but I'm going to click on that, move my 
cursor up to increase those colors and that's also affecting the skyline as well. So I'm getting some richer colors in here by using my targeted adjustment tool in saturation. So I'm just going to click done here. I would like to have a little more gradient in my sky. So I'm going to click on my gradient tool. I'm going to just zero that out by double clicking the word effect here. Bring my exposure down minus one just as a starting point. I'm going to hold my shift key. There we go. There's that sky, which looks nice and rich like that. I'm going to click done. Things look pretty good right here, but I'd like to open up the bridge a little here and here just to bring my attention to it. So I'm going to use my radial tool and I'm going to just change my exposure slider here to maybe 0.5 like that. Uh, close enough, 4 or 8. And now I'm going to just draw an ellipse here like that, rotate it to the angle of the bridge, and you'll see that I've opened up the bridge here. You can see that that is holding a, a lot of detail, but at the same time I just want to tighten that up. And I'm going to do the same thing over here on the Brooklyn Bridge, just bring my attention to it like that. And again, you can see it's a little dark. Here I'm opening it up and I'm going to just leave that because I like the way that looks. Now my attention is coming here. It's coming to the bridge and this part of the bridge here, the Manhattan Bridge, seems a little dark. So I'm going to open that up a little and that seems a little flat. There was flare there. There was light getting into my lens from the morning light. So I'm going to just change the clarity on here and move it up a little, give it some contrast like that. Finally, and I kind of like this, so I'm going to choose Done. I'm going to just scroll down here to my Effects panel, and I'm going to choose my Post Crop Vignetting. And I'm going to just give myself some dark edges around the side, like that. And now uh, that's really feeling kind of dramatic and nice. So I just missed this area here with my Crop tool, so I'm going to go back, choose my Crop, move that crop down just actually I don't want to move it down I just want to do a little from the sides and then a little from the top I don't want to lose too much click done and there it is there's my panorama stitched and developed I'm gonna tap the F key to go full screen and there we go that's my completed stitched panorama and it's been processed and that's before, and this is after, and this is Lightroom Guy. Thanks for watching.